Hey, what's up guys? My name is Grady. I'm with Simply Embedded and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple VGA controller in Verilog HTL. So let's get started. In order to accomplish this project, your FPGA development board needs to have a VGA connector like this one. Or if your FPGA development board does not have a VGA connector on board, you can purchase it separately online and I'll leave the link in the description below. You will also need a monitor that has a VGA connector. And in addition to that, you will need a VGA cable. If your monitor does not have a VGA port, you could use a VGA to HDMI converter or VGA to DVI converter. Either one of those is fine. I'll list all the products that I just mentioned in the description below so you can get them online if you don't have them yet. For this project, we'll be using a 640 by 480p resolution, which will be done in 60 Hz uh, refresh rate. So for the input clock signal for this will be 25.175 MHz. Although for this project, I kept it simple. I just made the input clock signal 25 MHz instead of 25.175. The difference is negligible. So don't worry about it too much. So let's go through the timing diagrams first for horizontal, vertical, and addressable video time. The total addressable video time for the horizontal time is 640 pixels. And the total addressable video time for the vertical is 480 pixels. Although the total number of pixels for horizontal line is 800 pixels. And for vertical line, this will be 525 pixels. For the horizontal line, out of those 800, as I said earlier, 640 will be used for addressable video time. So that's when the signal would go high for the colors that we're trying to display, either red, green, or blue. And 480 for the vertical out of those 525. Another important aspect that we need to know is that when the pixel count starts, for the vertical, there will be two pixels in the beginning that indicate vertical sync time. For, the, for that amount of time, the signal for V-Sync will go high. Similarly, horizontal pixel line will have the same type of signal, but it's called H-Sync. The length of the signal is 96 pixels. For that amount of time, the H-Sync signal will be asserted high. Throughout this video, I'll leave the pixel count values on the screen so you can refer to them at any time as you wish. Other than that, let's jump into the code. All right, go ahead and create a new project and I named it VGA controller, so you can do that as well. So I pre-created all the source files for this project. And now I'm just going to do all the inputs and outputs for those source files, what I think are necessary. So for example, the top file will have the horizontal sync, vertical sync, red, green, and blue, which are the RGB colors as the output. So let's start off with opening up the clock divider. I actually imported this clock divider from one of our previous projects. You can check it out right here in the corner. But essentially what, you, what we're just gonna do is we're gonna figure out a way to reduce the clock signal to 25 megahertz. So we can do this by changing the uh, division parameter value to one. Let's go to the horizontal counter. So the horizontal counter is the counter for that H sync. Based on the VGA standard, the H counter will count 800 units. So if we're using a counter that counts from zero to some specific number, we would need to count from zero to 799 to count 800 units. Now, in order to make the vertical counter work, we need to enable it whenever the horizontal counter reaches its maximum value. Whenever we reach the maximum value, or whenever we reset the horizontal counter, we need to send out a signal for the vertical counter to trigger it and count up once. So now let's go ahead and uh, do the vertical counter. So I just copy pasted all the code from the horizontal counter to the vertical counter. Based on the VGA standards for the vertical counter, the counter will need to count 525 units, which means we're counting from zero to 524. And then we reset the counter and do the same thing. The only case when we start counting with the vertical counter is when we get the signal from the horizontal counter that the horizontal counter has reached the maximum value. As soon as that happens, we count up once and wait again until the horizontal counter counts up uh, to the maximum number again. 
So now that we've finished the vertical counter and the horizontal counter, we can combine all of it into the top module. Set it up with all the wires for the horizontal counter, clock divider, and vertical counter. So I accidentally made a mistake here, uh, a small typo with the vertical counter. Uh, I actually didn't type out vertical counter, I typed out vertical counter. So ignore that. I hope you can type it out correctly as vertical. Other than that, let's go to the outputs, H-Sync, V-Sync, and the colors red, green, and blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign H-Sync signal to go high only when the H count value is less than 96. As soon as it hits 96, H sync is gonna go to zero. We will do the similar thing to V sync. Uh, when, it, when the vertical counter reaches two, the V sync goes to zero, otherwise it will be one. And this is all based on the VGA standards. So for the colors, we wanna make sure that the colors are within the addressable range. So the red will all only be displayed when edge count value is between 143 and 784, and when the vertical counter is greater than 35 and less than 515. We're gonna repeat the same thing for green and blue as well. After that, we're ready to go into creating the simulation file. So go ahead and create your test bench, write in all the necessary signals you have, uh, make sure you have all the outputs, uh, generate the coxy, and then run the simulation. Once the simulation opens up, go to the unit under test file, drag in the 25 megahertz clock signal. Also make sure you have the H counter value, enable V counter value, and V count value. So get all those values, change the horizontal and vertical counters to decimals. Now, as I'm seeing here, there's no vertical counter signal appearing. For a second, I thought there's something wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zoom out and see what's gonna happen. Seems like that the vertical counter only counts to one and then resets it to itself to zero. So from that, I can see that the problem is in vertical counter. We need to set up a condition that else if vertical counter value is equal to 525, and enable V counter. Actually, let's let's scratch that. Let's make a big if statement and just say that we only start counting or go to the counter loop if the enable vertical counter value has been set high by the horizontal counter. So relaunch your simulation, go back and let's see what happens. So once you relaunch your simulation, you can see that the vertical counter has started counting. So we can see that H sync is high. So, but from here we can see that the H counter value has reached 800, although we really wanted the last value to be 799. So let's go back to the horizontal counter and let's say, change that to 799. And we can assume that the same thing happened to the vertical counter because we set them out pretty much the same way. So change the vertical counter to 524 because that's the maximum value we want to reach. After that, we should be resetting the counter right away and starting to count from zero, one, two, three, four again. Relaunch the simulation and check it out. So when you go to the H counter, you can see 799, the last value. You go one forward, enable V counter goes high for once and then the horizontal sync stays high until the horizontal counter value is 96, and then it goes to zero, exactly what we wanted. The vertical sync is high there for a very small amount of time. So when we zoom in, we can see that the vertical sync is low when the vertical counter is 524, and as soon as it hits zero, it goes high, stays high until it's two, and then it's low again until the cycle repeats itself. So let's look at the colors now, the red, green, and blue. The addressable video range for horizontal counters starts at 144. So at 143, red, green, and blue should be all low, which is the case right now. Although for the vertical count value, 
the addressable video range starts at 35. Although at 35, red, green, and blue are low. They're all zero. So there's a problem there. Let's go back to our top module. And since you want to have the 35 included, let's change the comparison value to 34 instead. Save that, relaunch the simulation, and let's check it out again. So now if we go back here, it's okay, so the horizontal counter works, and then the vertical counter at 35, and when the horizontal counter is in the range, we can see that red, green, and blue are going high as well. So that is correct. So let's check the horizontal counter in the end as well, and the vertical counter in the end as well, so just to make sure that everything's correct. Based on this, it seems that everything's fine. As soon as the vertical counter hits 515, we're done. So that means that 515 is not included in the addressable video area. All of the colors of red, green, and blue are set high, which means that we should expect a white color uh, based on the RGB format. So you can go ahead and create a constraints file. Uh, make sure you set it up uh, properly. Um, have uh, make sure you have all your VGA and uh, VGA connections uh, made properly. Uh, after that, you can go ahead and generate the bit stream, and you should expect to see a nice white screen on your monitor. And this is how you do 480p in Verilog HDL. I would truly encourage you to try out new things, to create some patterns on the screen, maybe some letters, some text, even. So, or you can even do a ping pong game or any, anything like that, whatever you want. So this is the basics for the VGA. So understand the code, understand how it works and uh, try new things. I encourage you and I challenge you to do that. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I truly appreciate it. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring the bell to get notifications for future video uploads. Other than that, keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.